The master class is a highlight of the symposium that we added in 1984. Renata Scotto was our first master class teacher, and we have had spectacular master class teachers over the years, ranging from Metropolitan Opera stars to Max Rudolph, and we have another tonight. You will enjoy this thoroughly. There are reasons why we give the master class as part of the symposium, partly, maybe even especially, for the non-teachers and non-singers. When our performers start singing, they are going to sound awfully good to you. When Jack works with them, they are going to sound better. This evening is partly for ear training. It's partly for learning how you take a singer who's awfully good and add polish. But it is also to help you listen and hear the subtle differences that represent the distinction between good and great. Our master class teacher this evening is Jack Levini. He studied with his father, the the famous tenor Salvatore Levini, and has coached with exceptional singers throughout his career. Jack is a graduate of AVA, I'm happy to say. Our AVA and the Voice Foundation are closely linked. He has performed at every major opera house in the world, from the Metropolitan Opera to the Beijing Opera. Perhaps even more importantly, in terms of legacy, although his artistic legacy will, will be assured, is his work as a teacher. He teaches at the Jet Parker Young Artist Program at the Royal Opera House Covent Garden in London. He's on the faculty of Curtis and Brooklyn College, which is part of the City University of New York. And he's worked to create a strong platform for the development of young artists with the Metropolitan Opera Studio and Festival in Sicily, which he founded, and of which he remains the general director. He has students at the Met and elsewhere who have had stellar careers and won major awards. And he is a consummate artist as both a performer <coughs> and as a teacher including a master class teacher, Jack. Thank you, thank you so much, appreciate it. It's such a privilege to be with you all here, truly. You know, we dedicate our lives to opera. That's what we do. And we could have done many other things, but this is what we had to do because we feel drawn and we feel called to do this. And it's something that we, we pursue with great passion. And so I want to thank all of you, first of all, for the sacrifices that you have made for this art form that we all love. And I know so many of you from online, so I look at you and I'm like, okay, I know, I know these people. And I have friends here and, and people that I've worked with, and it's, it's just really such a privilege to be here. And I, I hope that I, I'm able to, to share something that's useful with you. Um, thank you so much to Ian Donofo, a great tenor and friend, who invited me this evening and organized all this stuff for you. Thank you. decades now was our savior when I was at ABA. Every time we were in Bad Voice, we pick up the phone, can I come over? Yes, of course. So he was always there for us. And so seeing his face kind of gives me a little bit of reassurance. To that. <laughs> so thank you. You know, uh, I'm working with tenors tonight in this master class, and that's, I, I do a little bit of that. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to have some fun with you all. It's such a, a terrible thing to get up here in front of an audience and have your technique 
tweaked. Is that yeah. Because technique is very subconscious. We do so many things for thousands of hours and these neural pathways get ingrained and they, they work in a certain way and then somebody kind of moves one little thing sideways and everything falls apart. Right? And it's got to happen in front of an audience, of course. <laughs> so let's be patient with our, with our singers and thank you for, for accepting to, to do this. I really appreciate it. Um, we don't have a lot of time, so let's go forward with the singing and then talk some more with you. Thank you, Jack. Um, we should mention that Jack really belongs here. He was a physicist before he was a singer. So he, he, he belongs more and more as part of the Voice Foundation family, and that, that is a goal. <laughs> We're doing something a little different. I have such faith in Ian, our executive director and, and former mentor, that I sort of stayed out of the master class this year, um, which is not easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> Ordinarily, as you know, we have all advanced singers and usually in different fox. Tonight, we have all tenors. And Ian has made this a little different by having tenors at different levels of training from beginner to advanced. So it, it should be a very instructional evening. Chris McGee is a 34-year-old tenor who has been studying voice formally for less than two years with Ian. He participated in musical theater in high school, found that he loved to sing, but opera was kind of a hobby until he was invited to sing at a wedding and on the advice of his wife decided to pursue operatic voice lessons. This is a particularly brave experience <laughs> for someone at that level. We delighted, we appreciate it, Chris. Please join us. Thank you.
And there's one thing about his voice that I love. It has squeak. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we should all, all voice teachers in our studios, we should have a placard that says, I serve the squeak. <laughs> right? Because without that, there is no theatricality to the voice. Right? We can talk about flow, we can talk about soft palate, and we can talk about the tongue floating and the larynx connected to the inhale and all that stuff. When the squeak is not there, and the vocal cords are not producing that resonance, why are we doing all those things? Why are we turning the voice? Why are we going up and doing that lightning? It's so that we can preserve that squeaky resonance. Absent that, we've lost everything about the sound. That's, that's, that's great. Continue there. What I would say most of all, you have this natural tendency to produce that resonance. Don't drive into it. Think of your breath as a gentle gesture. So do with me. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, so you're already going, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. Right? See that gesture? That is a way to power up the sound that's different than force. You can project the voice with a very gentle breath. So with me, go. Ah, uh, I am projecting the sound. Is strong, but that the, the, the air is not violent, it's not out. 
that space. Squeeze the voice in that space.
to a posture, it's not your sound. This is tricky. Because when we go for that position of beginning of the yawn, <coughs> and like to create the conditions of the space, the brain thinks that you should phonate the way that you should speak in that position. So if you go, uh, uh, oh, my cords are loose, because the brain's like, OK, you were yawning. Let's open up. Abductors, go to work. Get those cords open, right? Because that's what we do when we yawn. We open up and we breathe in, right? So you have to kind of condition the mind to do something that it's not, you know, that's used to doing. Create a new habit. Pick it up, space. So
sounds small. So what you have, that posture, is essential. Once you build that sweet build that sense of approach a little bit more, it not only gives you a sense of clarity in the a performance, but that trickles down into all the other harmonics so that the sound not only has directionality, but it has also a sense of stereo. So the, sing the people that hear you hear that voice coming at them, but they also hear that stereo like, who's the crazy person singing behind me? Right? Because they feel that sense of space around the sound. So let's do this again. Okay? Bring in a sense of resonance to that a little bit more. How? Focus. Okay? Um, uh, oh, oh, a little bit more focus. Right? Small, yeah. Not focus. Yeah. 
understand that it's possible to close the chords without chest. It's such an important skill and understanding. Get to that. Ma, 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 ma. It's, you can get to that squeak and feel like you're singing almost with the weight of a falsetto. Okay. Yeah? Right again. Right on that. Ma, ma. So don't hold. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't use yeah. the false chords to close. Yeah. You don't need the false chords. Right. You need to get to. The approach. Uh, 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 uh. Ma, uh, uh, uh. Try it. Ma. This is a better closure, but the air is a little yeah, bit yeah, strong. Yeah. Right? So to work on that, yeah. we're out of time, but that's the right path to find that closure and not press the air against it, but be on the voice. Ma. Yeah? To let the voice ring with closure, but without air slamming against the closure. Yeah? Yes, problem. Ah. I want to introduce the next student, who is a young man. I want to know levels of different levels of, of experience in education. We have a young 18-year-old who just got into Juilliard full-time. does not know yet up there, that world, but Jack, I think, may introduce it to me. Okay, we'll see. What's his name? Ben Peterson.
is ours. <laughs> Thinking that 
I'm still breathing in somehow, and that's where the posture comes in. Yeah. And now I have to sing and fool my brain into thinking that I'm still breathing in. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Scientists 
can tell me, but when that tongue goes down, something bad happens to the cord, they tend to lose their resonance. I don't know if it's an abduction or if it's just the standing wave doesn't work anymore. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't work. And so we hear that dull sound, what we do? We start muscling to try to compensate for the dull. When we muscle, we increase the pressure. Then we say, oh, my, my support's off. Let me take care of the support. That's not the problem. The support was not the problem. The squeeze was not the problem. The dull was not the problem. The problem was the tongue. We so often take care of the bottom of the chain and don't figure out how to get to the actual origin of the problem. We voice teachers, we have to be able to think right on the spot. We hear a defect and we're like, okay, why? And then we ask ourselves, why that? And then why that? Get to the bottom of the equation by thinking of a few cardinal things. If you see the tongue pressing down, that's a no-brainer. You know that something is going to be off because of that downward push. Right? So know that if you go, oh, your sound is going to get dull. Okay. Think that in your head. That's one main reason why you should not oh, press the tongue down, because you serve what? What do you serve? The squeak? That's right. <laughs>
times as singers, especially tenors and mezzos, <laughs> we tend to like lower the back of the tongue to push the epiglottis down to get more singers form. But wrong. Okay? Your epiglottis, I just I've checked with the mirror, your epiglottis can go down just fine without the tongue. It can. You just have to figure out what the chord is. Nah, 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 nah.
is Caruso singing a B flat. This is how I think when I teach. That's the first harmonics, second, third. And now putting them back together. And that's the full voice, right? So we have to think harmonically as singers. We don't just think about vowels, we think about the harmonics of the vowel. And the high note, you're singing the high C, you have to be thinking that note. Thank you, and thank you to Richard, and thank you 
especially to the brave victims. <laughs> there are 